How do Salesforce admins use automation tools to drive efficiency? Welcome to How I Solved It, where we dive into a business challenge and show how one awesome admin chose to solve it. I'm Jillian Bruce, Principal Admin Evangelist at Salesforce, and today I am joined by awesome admin Madeline Catanzo. Madeline, welcome. Thanks for having me, Jillian. Madeline, I am very, very happy that you're joining us on the show today to talk about all things process automation. I know you've planned an awesome demo and have lots of great tips for us all, but before we get started, I need to quickly share our forward-looking statement. This is a reminder to make all purchasing decisions based on currently available technology. Okay, now with that out of the way, let's get started. Madeline, you're a Salesforce admin with six years of experience in the Salesforce ecosystem. For those new admins out there, what exactly is process automation and why is it such an important skill for Salesforce admins? Jillian, I believe that process automation is an essential part of being an effective Salesforce admin. Within Salesforce, that's the ability to master tools like flows to drive efficiency within the system, reduce the risk of errors that as humans, we're always gonna make with repetitive tasks, and most importantly, to problem solve. And that's what we do as admins, right? We solve problems. That's right, admins are problem solvers at the heart of it all. So as admins, we love efficiency. How can organizations be more efficient using process automation with Salesforce? Uh, Jillian, believe it or not, I think many organizations are still using spreadsheets to manage and track their processes. <laughs> I bet every company has a spreadsheet of shame that they wish they didn't have. I worked with a company where multiple different departments were all handling the same issue, tracking software licenses and renewals in completely different ways. Some stuck in email trails and some using multiple different spreadsheets was the total definition of inefficiency. Oh my gosh. All those spreadsheets, it's giving me a headache just hearing about it. So it sounds like you had a really complex problem on your hands. So many spreadsheets, so many different places where information is being tracked. How did you solve it? Jillian, you're right, it was a total mess. But after talking to the different stakeholders and digging in to see how each part of the company was handling licensing, it became clear to me that I needed to build a solution in Salesforce that tracked all the important dates, costs, and automatically handled the layers of approvals. Ooh, this sounds like some awesome admin app building. Can I see what you built? Yeah, Jillian, let me show you how I solved it. So first, let's talk about how I approached building the solution. I knew I needed to create a custom object to track the applications and then the related objects to track licenses, and then the approvals that spanned across each of the departments of the company. Smart. Starting with the architecture is super important. So now that you've kind of got the basic structure down, what did you do next? Well, one of the most complex parts of the problem was the approvals. There were different layers of approvals that came from different parts of the company. You have approvals for the individual license allocations and approvals for the renewals. So that's where I decided to use a mixture of Salesforce approvals and flow. A mixture of different tools. All right, I wanna see all this in action. Can you walk me through how I'd request a new user license? So first you click the Request Additional License button, which is an action that I built for the application object. Once you do this, a screen flow pops up to ask more details about the request. Aha, I love a handy screen flow. That makes it really easy. So once I put in the details about the request, what happens next? So once you log the request, an approval process is triggered. The type of approval process is based off of who you have assigned the application as the approver. So that person can approve your request right in the email without having to log into Salesforce. You also get an email confirmation that your request has been sent and wh whoever's been going to be approving it for you. And you'll also be notified once your request is approved. All right, well, that's pretty slick. Madeline, how did you set up that automation? I used a combination of approvals and flows. And so here you can actually see the approval process. It's got some pretty basic entry criteria just so that we can activate it. And then it has one approval step where the approver is manually chosen because the flow is gonna actually insert that ID. And then we have just an approval and a rejection actions with email templates. Here is the flow that we're using to actually assign this approval process. We're going to get the application record approver ID, assign it to 
a collection. And then here's the screen where you're actually inputting that data that you just saw in that pop-up before. We confirm who the approver is, and then we just assign it via the submit approval core action. We're putting in that record ID, the approver ID from the collection, and then all of those details that you put in that form, we're putting into a text template for submission comments. And here is the email template that we've actually added for this piece. You can see that this is the approver name here, and then we have the submission comments that are from the text template. Thank you, Madeline, for that great demo and showing us how you solved it. You're totally welcome. You know, you showed us a lot of great things in that demo, but one of the things I wanted to highlight is how you, as a Salesforce admin, ensured the business gets the most value and return on investment in Salesforce. Now, often we refer to this as product management. What best practices do you have to share to help admins be better product managers? First, I think it's really important for admins to demonstrate their knowledge of multiple products across the Salesforce platform. Knowledge is key when it comes to solving problems and knowing what tools to use when. And second, since Salesforce is three releases a year, it's important for admins to continually evaluate new Salesforce products and features. Third, to be the go-to Salesforce subject matter expert at your company, the day-to-day -day point of contact for users, executives, vendors, and development teams. So when you're designing solutions in Salesforce, Madeline, such as the automated process and the demo you just shared with us, one thing that is super important for admins is attention to detail. What are some things that admins can do to ensure that such processes are accurate and thorough? One, working closely with stakeholders to ensure you fully understand the requirements and that no steps are missed. And then continually evaluate the information that you gather from multiple sources and just adjust it as necessary. And lastly, test, test, test. Make sure your solutions work end to end and make sense to users. Okay, Madeline, those were amazing pieces of advice. But before we wrap up, I want more from you. Can you tell everyone your top three process automation tips? Firstly, ensure you understand the why when developing a solution and how it fits into the bigger picture. I think understanding the context will get you much further than just focusing on the single problem you're trying to solve. You might even have a recommendation or build it completely differently once you know the whole story. Secondly, if you can visually map out your process using a process diagram tool, this will totally help you visualize all components of your process, especially if it spans across multiple teams and systems. And lastly, I'm a firm believer in a clear and consistent UI experience for your users. Even as admins, we have the ability to change the way Salesforce looks. Using tools like Lightning App Builder and Flows, we have a pretty unique ability to adjust the way that our users work. So ensure whatever you build within your Salesforce org has a consistent flow, so users don't get hung up on a bad UI experience, which in turn drives inefficiencies. Got to make your users happy, right? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Madeline, so much for joining us. This was so fun. Thank you again for being our guest today on How I Solved It. Now, if you'd like to learn more about anything you saw in today's episode, please visit admin.salesforce.com. With that, I'm Julian Bruce, and I'll catch you next time in the cloud. <laughs>